Well, welcome back to the third installment of my induction forge build and I, I am done. So on our last video, <clears throat> we, we took this apart. I wanted to test the, the water chiller, the water cooler to make sure that I had no leaks in here. And while doing that, I found those transformers. They looked a little wonky to me. So I reached out to the seller yesterday after filming that last video and they promptly got back to me. Um, they said it wasn't an issue. Just loosen the, the brackets, uh, rearrange the transformer how I wanted it, retighten, and it should be good to go. So this, in the subsequent clips, you'll see me do that. Then we'll test it. And then we're going to come back here and do one more test to have it set up like this with a big nut that I think will fit in there. And, and uh, we'll see this thing get metal red hot. All right, let's do this. Well, I heard back from tech support. They got right back to me yesterday. They told me to go ahead and loosen up these brackets on either side and then try and readjust this back to straight. So that's what I'm going to do today. I think this is about a six mil nut. I don't have, I don't think I have a combination wrench that gets this small. And this isn't going to work. All right, I lied. It's actually a seven millimeter, seven millimeter nut. And my wrenches go from six to eight. So I have to do it with this deep socket. Come here, washer. There you go. I think on these forward nuts. Oh, those aren't tight at all. Okay. This is a tight working space. <clears throat> I could take these hoses off, but I think I'd rather just leave them where they are if I can. All right, there's nut, nut number two. Let's see if we can't get that washer off. There we go. Now this nut on this, this rear nut I want to really loosen up. Give myself some... And there go the dogs. Okay, so that's loose now. Now, will these... Ah, these will adjust. Okay, let me do the same to the other side. Maybe we can stand these up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I've got these brackets loose on both sides. I don't know if this copper is supposed to be loose on here. I guess it is. So now I'm going to try and adjust this. Well, you can see where it's shifted right here. I'm going to try and line these back up. tell you this side looks really good the other side that you're seeing it from still crooked okay gonna keep fiddling with it but I'm almost there I think this is about as good as I can get it <clears throat> uh, I've got the zip tied up they seem pretty uh, aligned as long as aligned as I could get them after fiddling with them for a few minutes. 
and I've gone ahead and tensioned this bracket. I'm going to put, it, put another uh, nut and lock washer to lock that in and then here on the other side, that's how that looks. Pretty good. I'll go ahead and tight tension these down and then lock them in with nuts and lock washers. And then we will we will uh, test for water leaks with uh, by running the chiller. And then once that is uh, tested positive that we're good to go, we'll throw an induction coil on here and get some steel hot. It is working. So, um, I've got two ways to operate this. I can use this pedal down here, which is great for uh, reheating, I think. I'm a little long for the initial heat. Obviously, this isn't a three-phase motor, uh, you know, pulling in a, a, a huge amount of amps. I only have a 30-amp service here, over 240 volts. So, it does what it does. So, I've got a... A square nut in here I, I I use as a bolster actually usually but let's see let's see this thing heat up now first things first I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the chiller you'll hear that it is really quite quiet if you think this chiller is loud then you haven't used any other industrial equipment like my press or the mill the chiller is quiet uh, then I'll power this baby on and then we'll get this red hot I'm turn on the breaker here and turn on the unit. All right, let's reposition this camera. Really get in on this. This is as much for me as it is for you guys. I'm gonna use the foot pedal. I think if I were doing the same process over and over again. I could dial in the recipe and put the time here and then use the uh, automatic mode and hit start and stop. But we'll put it on the manual mode here and see if this thing 
can heat this bad boy up. Here we go. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a digital readout here. It tells me the time that's occurred. Right now we're at about 10 seconds. That is smelly. Woo! There must have been some kind of oil on that nut because, gosh dang. <laughs> so it's been about 40 seconds now. Max, max. Oh, it's getting red. It always works outside in. We are at, coming up on a minute. One minute. And this nut is probably, or this bol bolster plate is probably two inches by two inches by about an inch tall. There's 80 seconds. There's a minute and a half. There's Well, I lost count. It's getting red though. That, my friends, it's too easy. Look at that thing. I think I'm in love. Still hot. Well, guys, I'm, I'm fairly pleased. I'm glad this all worked out. I'm very happy that the seller on eBay was very responsive, got back to me uh, very quickly with each of my questions, even though they were, maybe to them they were stupid questions, but to me this was important. It works great. I'm excited for uh, future projects using this and it fits nicely in my small shop. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Take care, bye.